This is a very important and significant quality that separates out great teachers, great philosophers, great thinkers, poets, prophets, the people that, again, that we respect and admire, is that they are not doing what they're doing because of what is going to come to them. They're doing what they're doing because this inner voice says, I can't not do it. I'll die if I don't. I've got to get my music out. I can't die with my music in me. And so people who are detached from outcome, the irony of being detached from outcome, I think is summed up in, in Thoreau's definition, definition of success. I think the best definition of success I've ever heard came right from his mouth. He said, if you advance confidently in the direction of your own dreams, and endeavor to live the life which you have imagined, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. That is, if you find what you know you have to do, what your intuition, what your inner voice tells you is why you're here, and you pursue that and let go of outcome, be unconcerned with how it's going to work out, you're going to find more and more things arriving and showing up in your life. I mean, it's been absolutely, absolutely true for me. When I detach from outcome, I do my best writing. When I detach from being concerned about how an audience is going to react to me, I feel like I give my, most, my, my, my best talks. And when I stop being concerned, I mean, I had to learn this a long time ago. I didn't know this back even 20 years ago. I can remember calling my agent and friends and saying, where am I on the bestseller list? Back when Erroneous Zones and Pulling Your Own Strings and Sky's the Limit, those books were, were uh, topping the bestseller list. And then one day, I don't know if it was my wife, probably was, said to me, you're not on the bestseller list. Your book is on the bestseller list. You are not the bestseller list. Big lesson. Huge lesson. Detach from whether people are going to buy it, whether people are going to like it, and know in your heart, and then let go, and just watch. And then it starts to show up. I remember when, when I so desperately wanted to do um, the, uh, any national television back in the, in the 70s. Desperately. You know, any show that I could get on, Phil Donahue, or uh, the Today Show, Good Morning America, the Tonight Show, and all of that. And none of that was coming. But I was out there, and I had purchased the first couple of printings of my book, and I went out there, and I, and I distributed them to various bookstores. I mean, I, I did crazy things. Uh, I filled my car with books, and because uh, every time somebody told me I couldn't do it as a scurvy elephant, I would just say, oh, yeah, kind of thing, and uh, thank them for uh, telling me what I couldn't do, and then go out and do it. And then one day, I, I kind of let go of that, and I wasn't concerned any longer about trying to get on this show. I had a publicist who was doing that. Then I got a phone call from, the, from uh, one of the talent coordinators on The Tonight Show, and he called up and he said, uh, would you like to come on and do a pre-interview? Fly out to California. I said, great. I flew out to California, I did a pre-interview, and then I flew back to where I was staying in Michigan. Then I got a phone call in Michigan saying, you can do the show next Monday night. It was in August. It was 1976, and Shecky Green was the host. And they said, I said, great, I'll go on with Shecky Green. I love Shecky Green. I flew back out there. I did the show. It was fantastic. I got 20 minutes, the last the author spot, you know, but we had two uh, segments, and it was great. But it was August something, 1976, and it was the day of the, pres of the Republican National Convention, and Robert Dole was giving the keynote address. And the first time in the history of The Tonight Show, they preempted The Tonight Show. <laughs> After I had flown back to tell everybody about, watch me on The Tonight Show, they had preempted it and because his speech went too long. I have never been a real big fan of Bob Dole. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just kidding, of course. So I was, like, didn't know what was going to happen and so on. Apparently, the next day at the meeting, this friend of mine who was working on the, on the show, whose name was Howard Papish, he went in and told them about this guest that had been on Monday night, and uh, Johnny Carson had talked to them and said, look, if he was a good guest, then why don't we invite him to come back out and, uh, and appear with me before that show airs? They called me back, flew me back out to Michigan, 
from Michigan. This time there was a limo waiting for me. Uh -huh. When I got to the Tonight Show, I did the show on Wednesday night. It was great. We had about seven or eight minutes, but we, we got cut short. And Johnny said to me, would you like to stay over and do the show again tomorrow night? Because we didn't really have enough time to give you. I said, no, I'm busy. I've got my screen door. So no, I said, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I did the show the next night. Then on Monday, they showed the preempted show that had uh, been preempted from the week before. So from having absolutely no national exposure of any kind, I had three Tonight Show appearances in four days. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about that business of advancing confidently in the direction of your own dreams, going out there, doing what your heart tells you to do. I can't tell you how many books I get from people who, people have written this book and please give me an endorsement and please tell me how to go about doing, they want these long, and I always respond, just do it. Just do it. Don't, you can't, you can't write my speech. You can't deliver my speech. You can't do it the way I did it. What does your heart tell you? Go out there and never stop. Have that passion and detach from the outcome. Such a powerful lesson. Let go of what's going to come to you, and what is going to come to you will keep showing up in larger and larger and larger amounts.